the last two years at the transition from winter into spring, whilst on lockdown because of COVID, I had been off work. This meant that I got to be completely present to witness our little small holding waking up, seeing the first daffodils, green shoots and primroses open. Seeking to learn from what life brings and to see what gifts may lie within, this taught me that taking time out to be fully engaged with nature, to get my hands into the soil as it warms up for a new year of growing is just what I need. So this year I scheduled some time off for this spring break and immersed myself in the wonder of a new season and to prepare for a busy time of sowing seeds enriching the soil and feeding both the land and myself. I thought I'd share this with you, this last day of my spring break where I sow some seeds. I'm gonna have to shout because my microphone cable is really short and it's all the way over there. Um, I think I'll bring the camera a bit closer, but um, this is my potting area that I made in a previous video. Um, and I've just tidied it up because it looked really messy. <laughs> Not that it looks tidy now, but it's tidier than it normally looks. Um, I'm going to sow some carrots into some containers, um, a variety of different carrots. So um, I think maybe I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Um, I'll stop waffling and let's get sewing. Okay, here is my mix. We have, this is really just building sand. Um, that we got from our local hardware store and um, we've also underneath that I've already measured this out got some perlite which just helps with water retention and also with drainage um, and then underneath we have the veggie mix so I'm just gonna stir this all up and then um, I will decant it into its respective pots The first of the two pots that I have decanted my mix into. Um, I think I might stagger so, so I think I will do some more of these pots, but I'll wait a month or two just so that I extend uh, how long we have carrots for. Um, I will, yeah, so maybe in early May, maybe mid May, I will do some more, um, of maybe of a different variety, and we'll see what what grows better and yeah just compare and contrast the two different ones so I'm gonna get our carrot seed and we will get sowing so this is my vegetable seed box um, and for seed nerds um, it's always lovely to see in other people's seed boxes and see what they've got and how do they organize them and this is cardboard. I totally don't advise using cardboard. It means I can't keep this in the polytunnel and you can see where I did leave it in the polytunnel and beasties ate it. <laughs> but also it means that it gets soggy. So totally, totally go for something that is metal and that you can store um, somewhere cool and dark. Um, for my flower seeds, I use this old biscuit tin um, but I won't show you inside here because it's a horrendous mess and flower seeds for some reason I don't <laughs> treat the same way as I do vegetable seeds they're all just chucked in there okay let's have a peek yeah look at that whoops <laughs> we'll just leave that but yes this is a metal tin uh, so I totally advise using something that is metal so how I have got mine uh, alphabetical, front to back, um, first in terms of the families. So we've got alliums, that's all your onions, leeks, garlic, all those sorts of things. Then asteraceae, brassicas, and then within each flower, or sorry, within each vegetable family, then it's alphabetical within there. So 
let's say brassicas we've got uh, broccoli and there's all the different broccoli in there then cabbage and there's the varieties of different cabbage cauliflower and so on so what we are looking for is carrots so I'm going to go all the way down to Umbelifer family and carrots should come first. So here are the selection of carrot seeds that we have. So these ones were given away by our local library. That's an Autumn King. I have actually grown these, this variety before. Um, I might, yeah, we'll see. Then we have West Coast Seeds. My husband is Canadian and so these are a Canadian company and they do brilliant seeds. I really like them. Um, sugar Snacks, I have also grown these before. They're lovely and long and really sweet. So given that our tubs, our galvanized tubs that we're going to grow them in are nice and long, um, there should be enough space for those. So we have those and let's have a look. What does it say? I love Sarah, I love packaging, sorry, that really sort of gives you all the information in case it's just not in your mind. And um, so they're saying from April to July. So these are ones that maybe, and um, we're only mid-April at the minute. So these are ones that maybe I can sow a little bit later on. Um, then these are from Brown Envelope Seeds that are uh, based in Cork. They're really fantastic seed. Uh, people and they have really lovely heritage varieties of things and um, so this one is Rodelica main crop dee -dee 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 -dee. Um, bum, bum, bum. it doesn't tell me exactly when so yeah maybe we'll have a look at that this one is green vegetable seeds. So um, they are based, I think, in Leitrim. Um, it is the fantastic Klaus Leitenberger, who, um, whose book is the sort of growing Bible <laughs> for Irish growers. Um, it's really great when you find someone who really um, suits the knowledge that they're passing on to your own conditions. And given that Ireland is a really small country um, it's a really fantastic resource and um, these ones are saying that they want us to sow them in late May to early June so those ones are I'm going to save those and it's the same with this red cord Chantenay so actually these ones I'm going to keep and I will currently sow I think the Rodelica and then yeah the, sh the sugar snacks so these are the two that I'm going to sew now, and then these ones I will sew a little later on. I know that I said that I was going to grow the sugar snacks and the rodelica seeds, um, but I was sure that I had more seeds to choose from than what I pulled out of the box. So I had a little look, and lo and behold, we have these. <laughs> These are uh, Flyaway, they're an F1 variety, um, and they are from our family seed swap. Um, so uh, at Christmas time, uh, our gift, my husband and I gifted our family a, uh, a gift certificate to West Coast Seeds. This isn't sponsored by West Coast Seeds, by the way, but we uh, decided how about if we propose a family seed swap. So with our family in Canada, who obviously because of the pandemic, we haven't seen in over two years. And um, we thought what would be a lovely thing to feel connected to each other, but still be apart. Um, and so it was how about if we grow some things together? Um, so we all chose some varieties of uh, flowers and vegetables uh, from West Coast Seeds and we divvied them up. And so we have got um, a selection of things that we're going to grow and these carrots being one of them. So I do believe that the writing on this little packet is from Ardeo. Ardeo is my husband's cousin and they are a market gardener based in uh, on Vancouver Island, just outside of Victoria. 
Um, they run a CSA um, and called Rake and Radish Farm and they hopefully will also be growing <laughs> some flyaway carrots this year. I think their growing conditions might be a little better than ours, but um, mine are, that's the best that we can do in Donegal at this <laughs> at 55 degrees north. But so the sugar snacks are going to go back into the box for now and we will sow those another time. And so the updated sowing is going to be Rodelica and Fly Away. So these are the carrot seeds. That's probably enough. It's probably more than enough. But I'm an over sower and heavy handed at that. But I'm going to sprinkle these across the top of our prepared pot now. First, I'm going to water this well and let that drain down in. Because the carrot seed is so small, I don't want to be watering it after I've sown them because they'll just all <laughs> swim along the top and pool in areas exactly the same way as the perlite has done here. So I want to make sure that my soil is damp beforehand. Okay. Now that my seed is sown, I am going to, this is vermiculite, so I'm just going to put a light sprinkling of this over the top. It helps the top of your soil not dry out totally. It makes it easy to see your little emergent seedlings. Okay, lastly, it's just a label. These labels I have made from a yogurt pot. They're the sort of plasticky variety. Um, and I'm just gonna write on this with a little marker. Looking at the end of my marker, it looks terrible. Let's see how it writes. Badly. And I'm going to put the date, which today is the 11th of the fourth. All done. And here we are. Our carrot pots are now here in the tunnel where they will stay. We will check in on them again another time and see how they're getting on. The rain outside has really gotten pretty heavy. I hope that you can hear me <laughs> over the noise. But I wanted to take you on a little walk around. But we might actually, it might just be too soggy for that. We've got to go and get the basket and get some things for dinner. So we could at least do that. Having this polytunnel has been so great through the winter and we have enjoyed food from here all throughout the darker season. We're grateful to be able to eat what we've grown all year round. 
and while what is currently growing in here is coming to an end, the next flush of fruit, veggies and herbs is waiting in the wings to keep us nourished. Today I harvested celery, chard, cabbage leaves and shoots, some different kale varieties, some bolting beet greens, some green onions and herbs, which I will pan fry with some tasty gnocchi for dinner. Both our doggy Nina and I are grateful to you for stopping by. I go back to work as a massage therapist next week and my spring break has come to an end. We're also gearing up to start to build our little house here on the small holding, which I'm sure I will share here too. So wherever you are, I hope you're healthy, happy and looking forward to a productive and fulfilling season ahead.